Got a little ditty for you. Think it sounds intergalactic space demons. Goes a little like this on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, friends, it's your, your friend Z here. And I just finished watching something on Netflix, and I wanted to talk about it because it make you, make him a crazy. <laughs> make him lose my mind. I'm losing it based on this thing. Uh, so there was this show called Archive 81 <laughs> on Netflix. It's been number one. It was number one for like two weeks. And it's right, you know, it was number one right before the Ozark premiere came out. So I was like, oh, I don't, I didn't know anything about it. Went into it completely blind. Didn't watch a trailer. Didn't watch anything. And I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler free uh, as long as possible. And even, uh, I'm going to in general keep it as spoiler free. There's like one thing at the end I want to spoil, but it's not like the end of the thing. It's just a deal that I have that irritates me with this, this whole, whole deal. So here you have the show, and it's like a horror-type, uh, high-suspense-slash-mystery kind of show. I have no idea what's going on. It's about a man. He restores uh, tapes, like damaged tapes, and he's hired to restore damaged tapes. He's got some of his own personal trauma, as they usually do in these things. And what you end up uh, starting to see is a, it's almost like found footage. And here I am from the Blair Witch Project era. I did watch that movie in theaters and believed it was real wholeheartedly. <laughs> well, not really, but, uh, you know, I, they tried real hard to make you think it was real. And I did enjoy that movie. Uh, I did. I don't think it's a, it's a good movie to see in the theaters, not in, like in the situation that I was in where... The way they marketed it, it was found footage. Nobody knew if it was real or not. So <clears throat> that was kind of interesting. People were like, oh, is this real? So here's another found footage type thing. So you're seeing the what, what's going on through uh, this guy who's repairing the tapes. You're seeing it through his eyes where he's watching her experience because she films everything. This girl walks around and she films everything. Actors are great. I have no problems with the actors. I really, uh, the cinematography is good. The first couple episodes, it's it's a slow burn, but a good. I was intrigued. I kept going. Obviously, a lot of people like this show. So I think all of those things are great. And then we get to some of the things I don't like. But before we do that, why don't we just check out the Rotten Tomatoes real quick? Because there are things there that may help us here as we go through this okay so here we go 88 percent on the critic side 74 percent on the audience side and i can sort of see that because clearly people are watching it and then they might be getting to a part where they go what the heck is going on <clears throat> an archivist takes a job restoring damaged videotapes it gets pulled into a mystery involving a missing director and a demonic cult I don't know if I remember the mystery director so much, but um, there I did think, I think James Wan is associated with this on some level. He's like a producer or something. I thought I saw his name somewhere. It's eight episodes, and here's where I start going. Netflix, stop making everything so freaking long. Eight hours of a show that doesn't warrant eight hours doesn't need, it doesn't need eight hours. Every episode's like an hour at least. And there's like episodes where they change perspectives and go to different things. Like you, there was literally episodes you didn't need. You could have cut this. And there's no reason for it to be as long as it is. It's just, it's a completely unnecessary. Like I said, the first four episodes, you had something good going on. And then the last handful of episodes, I'm just like, why are you dragging this out? Do yourself a favor. Buy some editors. There are these people out there. They're really good at it, at like tightening things up and shortening them. I, I'm glad you have good cinematography from this, but you're just wasting everybody's time when you have all of this nonsense. Just, it's just too much. And it's every single freaking Netflix show. The Witcher, too damn long. This thing, too damn long. The only show I've ever thought on Netflix that I can recall off the top of my head 
that wasn't too long was freaking Ozark. So there's that. There's also the whole thing of it's about a podcast. It, it, it's based on a podcast, but it has a podcast in the show. Like, why? You don't have to get that meta. You really don't. It's not necessary. And then the I got two more things that, I, that really irks me about this. And again, I'm going to try to keep spoilers. Watch it if you want to. I'm not saying don't watch it. I'm not necess- I'm not really recommending it because I don't think it was worth my investment of time. I, d- I would have loved to see this end differently or or just move through differently because I liked the premise. I liked the story, but it just go- it just falls apart and things happen just so the plot can move forward. and I hate that kind of stuff. So they already gave it away and they said there's a demonic cult. There's a ritual in this with the song, and I thought all of that was pretty cool. They put together this chant, this whole thing, right? I have seen the ritual so many times at this point. Like, there's something to be said about having a little mystery to something. There's this one really, really good scene where the girl is filming part of the ritual. I don't need to see the whole ritual. There's even a tape, there's a tape of the ritual. I get to see the ritual like four or five times. I could do the ritual at this point. All I need, <laughs> I, all I need is a statue and some people to chant and a couple of other things, and I'm good to go. What? I, that's the other. Po- they're like saying like, oh, you need special things to do the ritual. Seems like everybody could do the ritual. Anybody in their own home. I'm gonna have a whole video teaching you how to do this ritual to summon this intergalactic demon. I, it's just like. Why, you know, it's just a shred of mystery. Don't show us the entire thing. Show us hints of it, a peek of it. But they literally go through the entire thing at least three times. They give you the entire ritual from start to finish. I'm like, why? They even have an entire episode to explain, like, the backstory to the ritual. No, I don't care. Like, you ruined everything. You ruined every freaking thing. And then the last thing I'm tired of seeing, and this better stop because it's really irritating. It's happening in movies. It's happening. Stop assuming you're going to get a sequel. Stop it. Don't do it. No more. Mm -mm. You ain't allowed to do it. You can't assume everything's going to get a sequel. Whatever happened to having a resolved story? Maybe there's more to explain. I, I'm ok- I'm totally okay with that. You can leave things unanswered, but you can't leave everything on a completely open cliffhanger as if you were going to go do something completely different and you don't know you have another season or you don't know you have another... You're, you're setting yourself up for a, a sequel. Like, I'm sure that revamp of Charlie's Angels did it. and I can't tell you. I've seen a ton of... Like, like the stupid He-Man show on freaking Netflix even did it. The one that everyone hated and was pissed at Kevin Smith about. Every stinking show, everything has to leave it open for a sequel. Why? Maybe so 20 years from now somebody can reboot this? Ridiculous. Don't do that. I don't think it takes away from anything. Like, I hope it doesn't spoil anything for you. But it's it, it's just ridiculous. Like, stop setting up for sequels. And then when it undermines most of what you did, and this is la- last thing, I promise. I promise. I won't rant any more about this. Could you have a more generic name than Archive 81? There is a movie out there that I love uh, called Session 9. It's a really good slow burn horror movie. I love it. I think it's fantastic. David Carradine's in it. I think it's David Carradine. Anyway, fantastic movie. Love it. Absolutely love it. Similar found footage, kind of, but not really. But anyway, check it out. It's worth it. That's a, It's already a generic name. Like, But at least Session 9 means something in this. Archive 81, I don't know what that means. There isn't like, as far as I know, and I watch this damn thing, it's not like he's going through Archive 1 through... 80 and then he stumbles upon 81 and 81 is extremely important to the plot it's nothing it means nothing don't do it don't have generic titles for your things you could have at least called it like song to summon demonic cult people and dancing with wolves like i don't care just call it something less generic than archive 81 
because so help me if you have Archive 82 up there. So help me, I'm coming for you. <laughs> like, come on, stop it, people. Anyway, I hope I didn't spoil anything for you. Um, watch it if you want to. It's a shame. It really is a shame because the actors are fantastic. The directing's not bad. Like, everything's good up to a point. And then they're like, hold on a second. Let's stop all the momentum the show has so we can explain stuff for you. Like, I needed that. I, you know, I need the geographic points of where something's going to be so that I can conduct this ritual. I can already do the ritual. You showed it to me several times. So anyway, that's all there is from me. I'm on to the next one. And uh, like, subscribe, you know the rest. Check out our podcast. It's probably better than this one. Anyway, love y'all. I'm on to the next one. Uh -huh.